There's an ominous gloom taunting Paris's Place Vendôme, irking the bastions of jewellery tradition, because hovering over the venerable houses is an intruder. Corbert, a jeweller that rejects diamonds that come from a mine. A rebel with a cause. We only use laboratory diamonds, cultured diamonds. Human genius has managed to reproduce successfully what nature did millions of years ago. It's the same thing, but under conditions where we respect both people and nature, there is no impact. These lab-grown or synthetic diamonds come with the same certificates as natural ones. Their criteria, identical. So here we have the carrots, 1.51. It's clarity, VVS2, which is almost perfect, and here the color, which for us is the most important, D, the most beautiful diamond color. There is nothing better. Lab-grown diamonds generally sell for 40% less. While they represent 2% of sales, more millennials are looking for lifestyle alternatives, and these gems might just tick the box. Today it's through our purchases, through what we consume, that we can express our values. For example, I'm vegetarian. I would never buy real fur. I limit using leather as much as possible. And now that I have this option, I'm not going to buy a diamond extracted from the earth over an ethical diamond made in a laboratory. Back in 1954, General Electric celebrated the world's first lab-grown diamond. Smaller and duller than their natural counterparts, they were ideal for cutting, grinding and drilling. But as technology advanced, so did the result. And today, man-made diamonds boast all the characteristics of mined ones. France has only one diamond lab, just outside of Paris. Diam Concept, overseen by Alex Chigal, a physics professor who wears, on her right hand, the first diamond produced in her lab, it all begins with a simple ingredient. Here I have a diamond crystal. It's a small plate of diamonds, a diamond seed. It's just like we were growing tomatoes. It's the same thing. The recipe is as follows. Take a diamond seed, place it in a reactor and add methane and hydrogen. Set the pressure to a few hundred millibars before activating the microwaves. Now bake it for four to six weeks between 850 and 1200 degrees. And that is how you make a diamond. They look a little like cakes which have been baked because we know that cakes rise and here it's the same. We start with the grain and it grows like that. After polishing, the result. Perfectly formed gems, sometimes purer than natural ones. So how do lab-grown diamonds stack up against mined ones? Well, first, there's the environmental impact to consider. Natural gems create giant gaping holes in the ground. For every carat of diamond mine, four tonnes of waste rock is generated. But what about CO2 emissions? Well, this one is trickier and depends on who you ask. According to the diamond miners, pulling a gem from the ground emits around one third of the CO2 compared to growing it in a lab. But that, of course, depends on what kind of energy the lab uses. Diamond Foundry, the biggest lab in the US, relies on solar energy and is thus carbon neutral. But what about the ethics? Mine diamonds have long had a reputation of fueling conflicts in Africa. And while there's been efforts to eliminate the so-called blood diamonds, NGOs confirm that child labour, corruption and violence persist. Faced with perhaps its biggest threat to date, the diamond miners have united. And it's in Antwerp, Belgium, the world's diamond capital, that we meet the man in charge of leading the attack. So here we're in the sorting room of one of the largest diamond mining companies in the world. Jean-Marc Libre, the face of the Diamond Producers Association. Seven of the mining heavyweights, 75% of production, and a marketing budget of $70 million to promote the idea that only natural diamonds are real. Real is rare. Real is a diamond. I'd like to take uh, the parallel of a, of a painting. Um, this is the real this is the real Picasso, this is the original. You know, every one of them is unique. No one will, you know, can replicate it. 
uh, a, a synthetic diamond is effectively a, a replica of, of a Picasso. It can look the same when it's polished, but in reality, it will give you very different pleasure and very different value. But is there a real difference? According to who? We put Antwerp's leading graders to the test. On the left, a synthetic diamond. On the right, a natural one. I will clean them first. There's a little bit of a cloud in the stone, but it's a really, really good stone. Despite 11 years of experience scrutinising the precious gems, a vet is stumped by the challenge. At this point, I cannot see any difference between the two stones. They are both normal diamond stones to me. It's both diamonds and both beautiful. With the battle lines drawn, last year, De Beers, the world's number one diamond miner, entered enemy territory, launching its own collection of synthetic diamonds, discount prices pitched as fashion jewellery, a strategy to undercut their rivals and persuade customers that real luxury is natural.